Welcome back to ISF. Today we're going between the pages with authors Kim Bean and Gina Dapiadade. The pair are here to share more about their latest projects. Both of you, welcome to ISF. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Kim, hi, I want to start with you. Your book, What the Doctors Don't Tell You, One Woman's Journey Through Hodgkin's Lymphoma, is autobiographical. You share with the readers the life you lived diagnosed with Hodgkin's. What inspired you to write the book and share these very personal experiences? So I was diagnosed um, with Hodgkin's and uh, afterwards, well, I'm also a writer. I have a Master of Fine Arts in Creative Writing. And so after I was done being sick, I was like, that was rough. <laughs> and I decided to just write it all down because that's what I do. And then I found out later that it's actually like therapeutic to write your story when you have a trauma experience. So, I was going to say that. I mean, you just said that you you know you have a degree in writing. Writing is is intrinsic of who you are. It's in your lexicon. But mm -hmm. writing about your own experience. You no, know, this is not fictional. <laughs> this no. is this is your real life. You said yes. it was cathartic. What did you discover about that catharsis as you wrote? I'm sure you were emotional. Oh, yeah. You grieved a life. You grieved the life that you were living. What else? What else came to the forefront? What else bubbled up? Um, it 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 actually showed me where all the gaps are because chemo takes all your thoughts and like destroys them and you have no idea that you have so many gaps so it let me know where i was missing memory it also really helped me put together the story of what exactly happened because the book starts basically the day i find the lump in my collarbone i was just doing this and i found it and then um all the way through to the other end where i decide i want to leave teaching and become a social worker you became a social worker mm -hmm. the joy in that and how purposeful that is for you Tell us. Well, I mean, I wanted to teach because I wanted to help and I wanted to grow. And I realized that when you're in a classroom, you're actually like there to give curriculum. You're not there to like, I mean, you are there to help students gain curriculum, but you're not necessarily there to foster all the good, right? So I also wanted to go back and like work in a hospital specifically to work with people who were sick because I knew what it was like to be in the bed. And so I wanted to go do that, go help people in the bed. When we read the book, what the doctors don't tell you, what are you teaching your readers? People around you don't have the hospital experience and don't know what it's like to be in the bed. And so there needs to be a translator between a doctor and a patient sometimes because they're speaking doctor jargon, you know, doctor ease, and we're like speaking human normal not in the medical world eat like language and the two need to be brought together and so i kind of also was thinking about how to explain the scenarios to individuals so that if they have to go through it one it's normalized and two it makes a little bit more sense because they just read somebody who went through it too yeah Gina, hi. Much like Kim's book, your book, Gina Goes to Mars, is very personal as you are very passionate about climate change. What inspired you to write this book and share your perspective as an author? So basically, I was in inspired by the climate crisis uh, and by the strong women that I have in my life. Gina Goes to Mars, the book takes place after all the attempt to, re to reverse the climate crisis failed. Um, and all the people want to move out from Earth and go to another planet, and Mars is the, pr the planet they want to move on to. So I decided uh, that if we had to resolve to live on Mars, uh, a group of women and um, non-binary scientists will be the first to assess if life on Mars is actually possible. Uh, the, to, for me, the shift in power was necessary on a new planet. So you said that you have diverse characters in your book. Why did you yes. choose to write from that perspective? Um, I wanted to be able to show a different kind of women, a different kind, every type of every type of woman, every kind of body shape, shapes, skin tone. Um, the characters are people um, that actually. I'm friends with in my life. I wanted uh, the, the characters to be people that you can be friends with, that you can hang out with, that you, you can have a different in, opi in opinion with, and, uh, but you can still relate to them because they're really highly intelligent people and uh, really highly qualified scientists, but they're not perfect. Um, they, are, they have flaws 
um, they also are very uh, open-minded for scientists and they're not afraid to fail. So you can relate to them really easily. When you have your readers read the book and, and, just, and go to the story of Gina Goes to Mars, what do you want them to walk away with? I want them to realize that moving to a new planet is not going to be an easy thing. It's going to be very, very difficult. Uh, Mars is not an habitable place. Uh, there's no oxygen on it. You, you can really breathe on Mars. Uh, planet Earth is planet A. Mars would be planet B. But uh, I just don't want people to give up on, on, um, on Earth right now. I just want uh, them to be uh, able to realize that the planet that we have is a gift. And there's the option, it's a fantasy for now. And uh, we need to fight. We need to fight that climate crisis. You can pick up both Gina and Kim's book wherever books are sold. Both of you, thank you so much for joining us Between the Pages here on ISF. Take care. Thank you.